Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is uh, my uh, 50mistakes.com, my restaurant cyber coaching website. 50mistakes.com, F I F T Y, or 50mistakes.com. And um, I love putting content on there because I love helping other restaurant owners. And uh, the. Um, we're all baffled by us restaurant owners about online reviews, TripAdvisor, Yelp, and all that sort of such, because anybody can be a reviewer now. And on 50mistakes.com, I do have a couple good tips on there saying you've got to respond to reviews, good or bad. You've just got to respond to them. Um, I respond to every review. Not every review TripAdvisor chooses to post, because sometimes I feel that the reviewer was a bit ridiculous. Um, like, for instance, when a reviewer tells my wife to F off in the middle of the dining room during Thanksgiving Day um, and with his 95-year-old with his mom, and he's clearly miserable, and there's nothing that we've done, um, then I'm going to put his name on there, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call him out and put his name on there. I'm going to respond. Of course, TripAdvisor doesn't allow you to do that. So then, you know, by the time I rewrite it, I'll, you know, mention something else, Tripadvisor, something like this, so they'll pull it. So, uh, you know, he knows who I know who I am, and I ran into the guy actually skiing the very next day on Black Friday, and the guy was just like a total ass, right? The guy's a total ass. But the thing is, when consumers go to your site, to these ratings, they actually see that this guy who reviewed you is an ass. So put back if they've done something wrong okay now keep in mind you have to put yourself in the reviewers shoes you have to think well what if I was in that situation and of course go to some restaurants that have a lot of reviews and respond a lot and get some ideas because of course you want to say things like well, it's never our intention to you know anger anybody it's never our intention to do this X Y and Z we're all about customer service and thank you for your feedback and we can take this back to customer to, to our, our meetings to do customer service training Whatever you want to say. And you know, and say, you know, please let me know next time you come in. I want to personally, you know, take care of you. Don't bribe them. Strip advisor, those sites don't like when you bribe people, okay? But you can simply say, you know, we have 100% satisfaction of our dining experience. If there was something that you didn't like, we wish you would have told us at the time because we would have been happy to either refund your money, not charge you, or get you something that you would have enjoyed. Because a lot of reviewers, okay? They won't say anything to you. They won't say anything to us restaurant owners because these restaurants are our babies and they don't want to like offend us. So, and a lot, and duly right, a lot of chefs and restaurant owners don't like to take criticism, right? We, we think we're always right. So we don't like to take criticism. So they'll, they don't just don't, they don't want to, they don't want to tell us like you would never go to a mom and say your baby's ugly, right? No, because every mom thinks their baby's the most beautiful baby ever. Same thing, every restaurant owner thinks it's their restaurant. When you see these TV shows, uh, restaurant impossible you see Gordon Ramsay go in man these restaurant owners are so tough here's like one of the best chefs in the world Gordon Ramsay telling him this is what you're doing wrong right they're like I love what I do here this food's fine this is and Gordon Ramsay's like this is crap this is cardboard this is whatever and the restaurant owner is such in a fog that he's like well this is what I've been doing for 20 years this is how I do it if you don't like it too bad. And that's the wrong attitude for a restaurant owner, okay? Now, granted, we're not going to please everybody, which is one back to these irrational people, but you have to at least make a response. And you don't say it's never our intention to do that. You know, we have a 100% satisfaction guarantee if you have one. Um, one thing great to put in place is so your staff can have a budget to comp things. I have one of those, you know, where my staff doesn't have to come to me. And you have to determine that based upon your price point. Uh, of your check averages, okay? It might be $5, it might be $15. In my case, it's $50. Because I don't want the staff coming to me every time that something's wrong. And not much happens in my restaurant that's wrong, but if something's wrong, I want them to say, you know, I'm gonna buy that whole table dessert and spend 30 bucks or 40 bucks on dessert for the table, right? And I don't want, if I'm not there, I don't want them calling me and disturbing me. I trust my staff, I train my staff. My staff are all adults. I treat them like adults, I give them responsibilities and they prove themselves to me, and that's one of the benefits of working at my restaurant. You have $50 to spend on a guest with no questions asked to management. I trust your decision, but I've done a lot of training to get my staff to there. I wouldn't take somebody new, put them in that shoe, and say, go comp whatever you need to up to 50 bucks. After 50 bucks, they need to call me. It's only happened once, or it's only happened once where we've had to go above $50 where we lost the ticket in the kitchen 
and nobody was paying attention and the person sat there for an hour and 15 minutes with with no food and we were swamped and busy and the ticket got lost it got dropped okay and by the time we realized that we're like oh my gosh and the person didn't really complain but we knew that was the right thing to do when we lose your ticket when it's our fault there's something right to do so they had a couple of burgers they had a couple of beers whatever they had it was 55 bucks or whatever bam no problem comp it that person appreciates it so back to your online reviews here's a great story a lot of people come to my place because of our online reviews our good online reviews I had a customer that came in the other day a six top right six top at lunchtime on a slow lunch six top comes in they buy all all expensive stuff the check average is awesome I'm like yeah $45 check average for lunch per person bam I'll take it six top no problem the guy says to me he goes we found you on TripAdvisor he goes and I really like that you answer all of your comments the good and the bad he goes we're not stupid we know that there's a lot of people out there that are just irrational right and we know that they're going to bash you but we respect the fact that you took the time to actually answer those people and he goes, we had a phenomenal experience here. We knew we would based upon your reviews and based upon how you manage your reviews online. Now, he could have gone to any of the four or five restaurants in town that day, right? He, they were here. They were staying for a retreat. Could have gone anywhere, right? No, he chose me because simple things like that make a difference and people can see it. People know it. So if you're not responding to your good reviews and especially your bad reviews on TripAdvisor, on Yelp, any of these, get to it right away. If you have 100 reviews you haven't responded to, do five a week. Don't, don't say, oh my gosh, there's 100 reviews here, 80 reviews or 200 reviews, what am I gonna do? Do five a week. We lost track this summertime. We just couldn't get to it. It's a, you know, and we went like two, three months without doing it. And we had like 30, 40, 50 built up. And so we said, okay, every Monday we're going to do five reviews, respond to five reviews. And I kind of was upset that I lost touch with that. We were just so busy running around short staffed. But sure enough, we got back to them and we did the right thing, good or bad reviews. And I think we only had one bad review in that whole mix, which I think we took care of prior to letting all the good ones go. So, and now, Here's the next part of this. You can actually take those reviews because they put their names on it, right? They've made it public, whether it's a fake screen name or a real screen name or like restaurant fanatic Sammy, okay? You can take these, take image shots, snapshots off of your computer screen and put that into your Facebook feed. You can put that on the Twitter. Um, you can actually, if you configure it correctly, if you can, if you configure it correctly, you can actually take and do it as a cover photo and rotate those cover photos. Those, when people put their name on something and they give you a good review like that, five star reviews, those look great, all right? So utilize those. Just don't let them sit there snagging on TripAdvisor or Yelp. Man, grab those, use them, reuse them, tell the world, okay? I've even seen one restaurant take all their five star reviews, snapshot them and stick them on a separate website where it says, our Yelp five-star reviews, right? Because Yelp publish all your reviews or not publish all your reviews based on but a lot of five-star reviews get filtered, so they'll go into filtered. Snapshot the five-star reviews have gotten filtered and it says our five-star Yelp reviews. And there's like 30, 40 Yelp five-star reviews in there, right? Bam, looks awesome. It looks better than their Yelp page. Customers get on your website, they look at that like, wow, bam, awesome. So get there, respond, take advantage of TripAdvisor, take advantage of Yelp. Um, it will really pay off for simple, simple effort and make sure you update those sites with new photos um, and embed your photos with specials and stuff like that. So rock it out, TripAdvisor, Yelp, whatever you got out there, whatever you guys are on, Urban Spoon, rock it out, respond, get involved. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Um, check out my 50mistakes.com website. It's a great cyber coaching tool. Thanks for watching.